First, we'll discuss the importance of the first 10 days of the Lajjah. This is a forgotten sunnah of our beloved Prophet You may have sinned all year. You may have missed doing good deeds in the month of Ramadan. You may have missed the last 10 nights of Ramadan. You may have missed doing good deeds during Laylatul Qadr. This is your opportunity. Make the best of it. The first 10 days of the Lajjah. Even if you have not sinned the whole year, maybe you did some minor sins. Maybe you did Ibadah in the month of Ramadan. Even you might have got the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Even you might have prayed the full night of Laylatul Qadr. Yet, you cannot afford as a Muslim the opportunity during the first 10 days of the Lajjah. Most of us Muslims, we are normally aware of the importance of Ramadan and we prepare ourselves. And I remember when I was a kid, more than 30 years back, when I was in school, about 45 years back, we used to prepare ourselves for Ramadan and we knew the importance of Ramadan, even of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. But we never heard about the importance of the first 10 days of the Lijjah. Alhamdulillah, now since social media has started, this is being discussed by the speaker. At my time when I was a kid, when I was in school, when I just entered college, we never heard the speaker speaking about the importance of 10 days of the Lijjah. I remember the first time I heard was maybe about 15 years back in the social media. When we got involved in the field of Dawa, more than 25, 30 years back, that's the time we came to know about the importance of the first 10 days of the Lijjah. And it was about 15 years back that the first time I heard in the social media a speaker speaking about the importance of the first 10 days of the Lijjah. And Alhamdulillah, year by year, it's increasing and more and more people are speaking about the importance of the first 10 days of the Lijjah. That is the reason I thought I will dedicate the major portion of this session today to the first 10 days of the Lijjah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath in Surah Fajr, chapter number 89, verse number 1 to 2. Allah says, Wal Fajr, Walayalin Ash, by Fajr, by dawn, by the 10 nights. And the Mufassirin, they say, these 10 nights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking oath of refers to the first 10 days of the Lijjah. And in many languages, when you speak about the days, it includes the night. When you speak about the night, it includes the day. For example, if I say in English, I spent 10 days in London. But naturally, it includes I spent 10 days and 10 nights in London. Depending upon the context, it may include the full day, it may include part of the day, it may include the night, it may not include. Similarly, when Allah, when in Arabic, when the nights are referred to, it may refer to the night only, it may refer to the night and day put together, or it may refer to the day only. In this Surah Al-Fajr, Surah number 89, verse number 1 to 2, when Allah says, Wal-Fajr, Walayalin Ashr, by dawn, by the ten nights. The Mufassirin say, and it's also mentioned in Ibn Qasir, volume number 8, page number 413, and if we refer to the summarized version printed the English translation by Maidar Salam, it is volume number 10, page number 468. Ibn Qasir and many Mufassirin say that these 10 nights refer to the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And they agree that these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are better than all the other days of the year. It's even better than the last 10 days of Ramadan. But it's mentioned, Rebbe Qasir, volume number 5, page number 412, that though the first 10 days of the Lijjah are the best days of the full year, the last 10 nights are, of Ramadan are the best nights of the year. The scholars differ. Some scholars, few, do say that 
the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are better than the last 10 nights of Ramadan. There are few scholars who say the last 10 nights are better than the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. But the right opinion and the correct opinion is by Ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh al-Islam. And he rightly said that the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are the best days in the full year. It is even better than the last 10 days of Ramadan. But the last 10 nights of Ramadan, they are the best nights in the full year because it has the Laylatul Qadr. It is the best night in the full year. So the last 10 nights of Ramadan are the best nights because it has Laylatul Qadr. And amongst the days in the full year, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are the best days in the year because it has the Yom Al Arafah, the day of Arafah. The second place where the Quran refers to the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah is in Surah Al Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 28. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they witness the benefits which have been provided and they celebrate the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the days appointed. Here, these days are referring to the first 10 days of the Lijjah. And Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, may Allah have mercy on him. He writes in Futal Bari that these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are the only 10 days in the full year where any Muslim can simultaneously perform all the five pillars, all the five faraid of Islam. If he wants to. Yes, he can implement on the Tawheed. He can offer Salah. Simultaneously together in the first 10 days. He can give zakat if he hasn't given or give obligatory charity or give extra charity. He can fast and he can also perform hajj. These are the only days in the full year where a person can simultaneously perform all the five pillars of Islam. It is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 2, hadith number 969. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him. He said that the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, there are no good deeds done on any other day better than done during the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, done during these days. And the Sahabas, the companion, they asked, not even jihad? And the Prophet replied, not even jihad, unless a person puts in danger his life and wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and does not return with any. That means he goes for jihad and is martyred in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, the good deeds done during the first 10 days of the Lajjah are better than any deed done on any other days of the year, including jihad, unless if the person is martyred and he loses his wealth and life during jihad. That's the only one good deed which cannot be better. Otherwise, the deeds done on the first day of the Lijjah are better than any deed done on any other day of the year. And the same message is repeated in Al Darimi, Hadith number 1925, where it's mentioned, Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him. He said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that no deeds done are better, are more precious, are more important than the deeds done on Yom al Arafah. And the companion asked, not even jihad? And the Prophet said, not even jihad, unless a person goes out in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his life and wealth and does not return with any. That means he is martyred in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this same message is repeated again in another Sayyid hadith that the deeds done on the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are better than any deeds done on any other day of the year except a person who is martyred in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while doing jihad. It is so important and unfortunately this sunnah of doing good deeds during the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah is forgotten. It's further mentioned in Sahih Muslim, point number three, hadith number 2747, when the Prophet was asked regarding fasting on Yomul Arafah, the Prophet said, 
it expiates the sins of the previous year and the coming year. That means the most important fast after the first fast of Ramadan is fasting on Yom al Arafah. It is the most. It expiates your sins of the previous year as well as the coming year. There are some scholars who say that the fasting of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, is the most important because there's a hadith that the most important fast after the first fast is the fasting on Yom al Ashura. But the different opinion, but the correct opinion is that Yom al Arafah fasting is far superior because it expiates the sins of the previous year and the following year, whereas fasting on Ashura expiates only the sins of the previous year. But there is unanimous agreement that these two fasts of Yom al Arafah and fasting on Ashura are the two most important fasts after the fasting of the month of Ramadan. It's mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number three, hadith number. 2437 that the wives of the Prophet said that the Messenger of Allah fasted during the first nine days of the Lijja and during Ashura and three days every month, the first Monday and two Thursdays. So from this hadith we come to know that the Prophet fasted the first nine days of the Lijja. That means it is highly recommended to fast on all the first nine days of the Hulujjah. One may ask, why not fast all the ten days of the Hulujjah? The answer is given in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3, hadith number 1991, where the beloved Prophet said that he forbade fasting on Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, because these are the two Eids of celebration, of eating and drinking. So it is prohibited to fast on the two Eidain, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. That's the reason we don't have to fast the first 10 days of the Hulijjah, though the first 10 days are the most important days of the year, we only fast during the first 9 days of the Hulijjah. It's further mentioned in Sai Muslim, volume number 3, hadith number 2679. The beloved Prophet Muhammad said that no one shall enter paradise except a believer. And the days of Mina are the days of eating and drinking. That means a Muslim should not even fast on Yom Tashri, the three days following the Eid al Adha, that is the 11th, 12th, and 13th of the Laj, because these are the days of eating and drinking and feasting. So, besides the Eid day, a Muslim should not even fast on the Yom Tashri. That is the 11th, 12th, and 13th of the Lija. It's mentioned in Sai Muslim, volume number 5, hadith number 5118, that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that during the first 10 days of the Lija, a person who has an animal which he has to sacrifice, he should not remove his hair, nor trim his nails. Based on this hadith, a person who is sacrificing an animal, has an animal and wants to sacrifice on each day or the following three days, he should not remove his hair or trim his nails from the first day of the Lija until he sacrifices the animal. This restriction is only for the person who is sacrificing the animal himself. If a person has asked somebody else to sacrifice on his behalf, then the restriction is not there. It's further mentioned in Musnad Ahmad, Hadith number 5446, Abdullah bin Omar, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, the deeds done during the first 10 days of Dhulijjah are the most important deeds done in the full year. And that's the reason you should say the tahleel, the takbir and tahmeed. Tahleel is la ilaha illallah. Takbir is Allah Akbar. Tahmeed is Alhamdulillah. And it is mentioned in Fatul Bari, volume number 2, page number 462, that the takbirat mentioned there is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, illa alhamd. That Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. There is no God but Allah. Allah is the greatest. All praise are due to Allah. The Takbirat is mentioned in Fatul Bari, 
ولیم ٹو پیج نمبر فور سکسٹی ٹو اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر لا الہ الا اللہ واللہ اکبر ولی اللہ الحمد اٹس آسو منشنڈ ان سائی بخاری ولیم ٹو پیج نمبر سکسٹی فائیو دیٹ عبداللہ بن عمر این ابو حریرہ میں اللہ بی پیز ویڈ دیم بوت دیف ٹو گو آؤٹ ان دی مارکٹ پلیس ڈیورنگ دی فرس ٹین دیز آف دو لجا این لاؤڈلی دیف ٹو ریسائٹ دی تکبیرات And when the others used to hear him, the sahabas, they used to repeat on their own. That means it is a sunnah during the first ten days of the Lajjah to say the takbirat loudly in the marketplace. I have traveled to so many Muslim countries. I have never heard in any Muslim country Muslims saying loudly in the marketplace, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, illa ilham. I have not heard. Many Muslim countries have gone to. Maybe in some Gulf countries, there may be people saying, but when I travel, I have not heard this in the marketplace. We should revive this sunnah. And there's another hadith mentioned in Jami Tirmidhi, volume number 6, hadith number 3377, that Abu Darda, may Allah be peace with him, he said that the messenger of Allah asked, do you know the deed which is most loved by Allah, the deed which is most precious to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the deed which is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more than giving charity of silver and gold, more than going in the battlefield and striking the necks of the enemy, more beloved than having your neck struck by the enemy in the battlefield. And the sahabas asked, which is that deed? And the Prophet replied, zikr of Allah. Now this hadith, it is not specifically talking about the first 10 days of the religion. It is generally the deed loved most by Allah is zikr. And the, all the other hadith I quoted earlier says that the deeds, the good deeds done during the first 10 days of the religion are better than deeds done on any other day. So imagine if we do the zikr of Allah during the first 10 days of the religion, especially go out in the marketplace and say loudly the takbirat Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilha illallah Allahu Akbar Wallillahi alhamd Imagine the sawab It is much better than distributing gold or silver in the marketplace Much better than striking the enemy on the neck in the battlefield or being struck by the enemy on your neck in the battlefield Let us revive the sunnah and during these 10 days of the Lijja, recite the Sakbirat on our own and even in the marketplace. And the 10 days of the Lijja are starting from tomorrow in most of the countries. In Malaysia, where now it is close to 12 midnight, the Lijja has already started, the night has started, but the day will start approximately 5 or 50 minutes from now, inshallah. Malaysia is one of the few countries where the first 10 days of Dhul Lijjah will start and later on the other countries, the Gulf countries, 4 hours later, 5 hours later, so on and so forth. So that's the reason I thought it's important for me to speak on this topic. So let us decide today that these 10 days of Dhul Lijjah which are starting from tomorrow in most of the countries, in some countries it may be one day later, India, Pakistan, etc. In some countries it may be two days later. But most of the countries it is Inshallah, starting from tomorrow. So let us make the most of these first 10 days of the Lijjah.